I don't think there's any. <laughs> there's, there's no such thing as a typical week for a, a clinical pharmacologist. Is that, I mean, this certainly isn't for me. So one week I might spend a weekend on the acute medical take. Yeah. I might then be recruiting patients into my pharmacokinetic study or talking about some of the industry studies we've got running in, in, in the group. Uh, and then the next minute lecturing medical students on clinical pharmacology, therapeutics, prescribing, <laughs> writing textbooks, uh -huh. reviewing articles. It's, uh, the diversity is amazing. Yeah. I'm just at the end of my PhD now, so um, my typical week tends to be a lot more laboratory-based at the moment. Um, so I do spend um, a great deal of time churning through big data from transcriptomic studies, um, recruiting for clinical trials, um, uh, as well as sort of cell culture and really sort of basic sort of science skills. Um, but still also sit in the drug and therapeutics committees um, and do a bit of clinical work and see my toxicology patients in the morning. So um, it tends to be some sort of mix of that. We've got the uh, specialist poisons unit, which I think you also have in, in Edinburgh. So that's, an, that's interesting because you're seeing uh, aspects of pharmacology, uh, but also it's not a purely um, scientific thing coming back to the clinical, I suppose, in clinical pharmacology. It's also about a lot of these people may be quite troubled and um, it's giving them empathy and providing a supportive environment uh, for them to receive treatment, both psychological uh, and medical, that they, that they need. We also have our, our general medical uh, ward patients. So essentially that is always kind of the unexpected about what you could be doing and what you could be involved in. And, and in terms of the outpatient work, uh, we run uh, a specialist hypertension clinic so for high blood pressure and we also do uh, an adverse uh, drug reaction clinic. And on top of that we have the ongoing uh, undergraduate, postgraduate teaching uh, that we organise, drug and regulatory uh, committees uh, for Wales, yellow card reporting centres um, and own personal research interests as well. So as you can see it's a very, very, very varied very varied week that we have. <laughs> that is one of um, the problems we have as a specialty in, in letting other people into our world or trying to, um, I, I guess, persuade people to become clinical pharmacologists. As, if, as, a, as, a, as a junior doctor, you look at a respiratory registrar or a respiratory consultant, you know you do a training program and you learn about TB, bronchoscopy, asthma, uh, and you have it clearly mapped out. But in clinical pharmacology, it's totally different. You know, um, uh, my bronchoscopy uh, might be intensive care research. Lawrence's bronchoscopy might be yellow cards and, and drug safety. And for Emma, it, you know, it, it might be sort of prescribing policy. So we just have a completely flexible system of training. And, and for me, that is the great advantage of being a clinical pharmacologist because it means you have the opportunity to pursue your interests, but you have to also accept that there is that uncertainty with what you are uh, going to do and the fact that you have to drive it a little bit yourself. And for me, that's a great advantage. And it's just learning how to tell everyone else that that's a good thing. I think the most difficult thing I found, particularly early on in my training, was a desire to justify my existence <laughs> yes. as a clinical pharmacologist. Because you come out of um, core medical training or ha however you enter, and suddenly you're on a general medicine take, and there might be another respiratory registrar there, and it's very obvious what the respiratory registrar is there for. And most people don't know what clinical pharmacologists are, so they just presume that you already know the BNF from, yes. <laughs> from start to finish. And you know about every drug interaction, oh. and you know about every adverse effect, how common they are, and all that kind of stuff. And I found that a bit tough tough at the start, kind of almost defining myself. And, and it comes back to that thing of the great advantage of the flexibility gives that sort of degree of uncertainty of what it is that gives you value, value added. I moved area to be a registrar and um, I fell in line very quickly with three other women who are now a respiratory registrar, a GI registrar, and a care, a care of the elderly registrar. So in the beginning, I would go out, for, go out for dinner, go out for drinks, and the three of them would be talking about what they achieved that week, and I would just be sitting there going, shoot, what did, what was my value to the NHS this week? Um, and now, sort of six years on, I'm sitting there going, actually, I've, I've, I've achieved a great deal. Mm. I think I've positively impacted upon a, a, a large number of patients with what I've done this week.